I want to move on and talk about uh, market shifts. Okay, so I'm, I've come up with some scenarios. We'll shift one curve at a time, and we'll shift a curve in all possible ways, and we'll just look at what happens in the uh, supply and demand diagram and what happens specifically to equilibrium. We know when a curve shifts, when supply or demand moves, we're going to get to a new equilibrium. So first off, we want to look at a situation where supply shifts left, and I give an, I've provided an example scenario here. What's the effect on the market for cheeseburgers if the price of beef increases? Okay, so there's supply and demand, and we can pencil in our initial equilibrium at least. So this price one, Q1. And notice I don't need to put actual numbers in for price and quantity. I could make up numbers. All, what we're doing here, all we care about is saying if there is a shift, what's going to happen to price and quantity in terms of what direction do they move? Does price move up or down? Does quantity increase or decrease? Okay, so that's all we're really looking at right now. Okay, so the effect on the market for cheeseburgers if the price of beef increases. Now, I've already told you this is a leftward supply shift, so let's go ahead and draw that in. And we want to do something like this. Move the supply curve to the left, enough to where it's really noticeable, and we can clearly analyze what's happening, and we'll call that supply two. Now, why would that be a leftward shift in supply? Well, you can think about it in terms of our, our determinants of supply, one of which was the cost of inputs, and of course, uh, to make cheese burgers, you need what? Ground beef, right? So price of beef goes up, that's an input into cheeseburgers, and that means it's more costly to produce a cheeseburger. So you really can want to think about this in terms of the cost is going up, and that shifts the supply curve up and to the left. So it, for any quantity of production, producers will make fewer. I'm sorry. For any quantity of production, producers will need a higher price to compensate those higher costs. Or for any existing price, they will make fewer because there's not as much money to be made per unit. Okay, so there's a very simple example of a leftward shift in supply. And then to analyze what happens in the market, all we do is go from E1, there's our initial equilibrium, up here to E2. Okay. We know that equilibrium will prevail. Now, P1 here, if it stays the, the price, it's below where equilibrium has to be, and we know that market forces will push this price up. Okay, consumers will cut back. They'll march up the demand curve and not eat so many cheeseburgers, but they will pay slightly higher, somewhat higher prices, and the burger restaurants will just not make as many so quantity declines like this, and price increases like this, and we label this P2. Okay, So price is up and quantity down when supply shifts left. Okay, And we go from one equilibrium to another. And you know, I might ask you a question like, is there a shortage of cheeseburgers? In the economic sense of the word, where quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied? No, of course not. We're at a new equilibrium. The price goes up as the cost of producing the good goes up. Right? It might have taken place over a period of time, and there might have been gradual changes. You know, we went from S, you know, S1 to S1.1, 1.2, so on and so forth, and then we eventually get to S2. And all the while, the price is moving up, quantities moving down. But we are always either at an equilibrium or very close to to the equilibrium that we're moving to. You can think about it either way. It doesn't really matter. Just realize that equilibrium prevails, and in a free market. We're always at or near equilibrium, and therefore we don't have shortages. What we have is price movements and quantity movements, keeping this market equilibrated and giving us the maximum gains from trade that are available given the way the world is, right? In this situation, gains from trade triangles, surplus triangles are smaller, but that's all that's available given the higher costs of making beef. Okay, so there's one. Now let's move on and let's think about us. Um, alternative supply shift here. Let me draw our basic graph again. Quantity per time period, price, dollars per unit. Oh, and by the way, let me go back to the um, market here. You know, I, you want to label this, although I've really clouded that one up, so let me start over. Let me start on the new one here. Uh, you'll want to label your graph, and here we're going to do the effect on the donut market in Marshall. So let's label this donuts. Okay, and this would be this would be quantity per per day, maybe units per day, 
and the price per unit, the price per donut. Here I want to show the supply shifting right, so let me draw in a demand curve, an initial supply curve, which we'll call S1, and then an increased rightward shifted supply curve, which we'll call S2. One thing that can shift the supply curve to the right is the entry of new producers. And we did indeed just see the uh, opening of a new donut shop in Marshall right next to uh, our campus. Uh, I don't know if it's been a significant enough increase to have a shift on prices, but let's say, you know, let's say there is a, a, a dozen new donut shops open in Marshall. That would definitely cause a rightward shift in supply at a noticeable level to where we could expect this kind of movement in price and quantity. Price goes from P1, okay, this is equilibrium one, and that's Q1. Price will definitely decline or at least there'll be a downward tendency on price as quantity increases. So in this situation with more suppliers, uh, price falls, quantity increases. There's a supply shift. Okay, we go from E1 to E2. Okay. And that's just one reason, you know, I give one reason up here for a leftward supply shift, uh, increasing price of input. There's others, it could be exit of producers, it could be um, it could be tax factors, taxes rise on producers, so they have to raise their prices to compensate. There's a lot of different factors that could shift it left and a lot of different factors that could shift it right. Here's just one. It could be a change in technology. You know, it could be a new process for making donuts more efficiently. Uh, it could be a reduction in the cost of inputs for donuts like flour and yeast and etc. And of course, on the homework, you'll see some different examples. Well, I won't tell you whether the supply or demand curve shifts left or right, but you'll, you'll be given enough information to make the determination. Is it a supply or demand factor? And is it a left or a right movement? All right. And once you get used to moving the supply or demand curve, you, you know, and seeing where the equilibrium price and quantity go, this will become pretty easy for you, I hope, at least. Okay, now let's think about demand shifts. <clears throat> And first off, we'll just say the demand curve shifts left. Now, what might cause that? Well, um, I was just thinking, what's a what's an example where tastes and preferences might have changed? Here's something from recent um, news. Um, thinking about market for Ray Rice jerseys after he was suspended from the NFL for uh, misbehaving off the field. So the fans might not favor him so much, or at least not might not want to be associated with him so much. He's not playing anymore, so. What might we expect to happen to demand for Ray Rice jerseys and memorabilia if he's not so popular anymore? This might induce a demand decrease, a leftward demand shift. We'll draw an initial demand curve, D1, and a supply curve, S. And I'm postulating that the demand has fallen off. In fact, it might fall off pretty steeply given sort of the state of disgrace for Ray Rice. So we started at a price up here, P1, quantity up here, Q1, but after demand, and we were at E1 here, equilibrium one, after demand tapers off, after de demand shifts, okay, and this is the whole demand curve moving, the whole list of price quantity combinations moving because there's a decline in taste and preferences over Ray Rice jerseys. So now we're down here at equilibrium two. Quantity has tapered off and price has decreased. Okay, so there we have a leftward shift in demand. Price goes down, quantity goes down. I was curious as to whether this is true, and I, I'll have a frame of comparison here in a minute, but it does look like, and I'm looking on eBay here, it looks like Ray Rice jerseys are um, selling a pretty low price. Uh, selling a pretty low price. It looks like there's not maybe not a whole lot of demand in place to boost their prices up. So my hypothesis that demand has fallen off for Ray Rice jerseys maybe is validated. You can see they're selling them on eBay here for maybe 25 bucks or less. Now let's think about the opposite. I'll stay with the same theme and I'll think about what happens maybe to the demand for Tom Brady jerseys after he won the Super Bowl recently. Okay, maybe we will see a rightward shift in demand for Tom Brady jerseys. So what would we expect to happen there? By the way, I'm drawing these, um, the slope on the supply and demand is, is not very realistic here. We'll get into issues of elasticity later on and we'll talk about how we want to think about the slope. But for now, we're just doing very generic, very basic, so we can think about the, the shifts and the basic effect on the market. So this is good enough for now. Okay, so that's the, that's before he wins the Super Bowl. What, let's think about what happens to demand after he wins the Super Bowl. A lot of, peop, a lot of um, people maybe 
existing fans become more pumped up and want to own a jersey to brag about their fandom. Maybe um, there's new fans created and they want some gear so they can show off their fanness. So we might think that the demand rises, which means that people are willing to pay more for any quantity or buy more at any price. And that brings us here to E2. Okay. And by the way, we again, we know that if demand has shifted, the old price, P1 here, is now a below equilibrium price, so it will quickly get bid up. And we'll wind up at a higher price, P2, so here price rises, and a higher quantity. Okay, so here price and quantity both go up with the demand curve at right climbing up the supply curve. Okay, so there's a rightward shift in demand. And here's the frame of reference, by the way, for the Ray Rice jerseys. I look up Tom Brady jerseys on eBay, and it looks like they're selling at a much uh, higher price than Ray Rice. So we definitely have a disparity in demand between uh, Ray Rice and Tom Brady jerseys. That's that's for sure. How much of that is due to recent events? Oh, I, I think it's plausible that a lot of that is due at least to uh, you know Brady's having won the Super Bowl, boosting demand for for Brady gear, and for Ray Rice having been disgraced and gotten in trouble last year. It's probably uh, behind the very low price of his equipment. Okay, so there's some basic. We just uh, looked at basically every scenario: uh, leftward shift in demand. Rightward shift in demand, leftward shift in supply, rightward shift in supply. And uh, if you understood that and you feel comfortable shifting the supply and demand curves, you should be all set. You should be able to work any of the problems I've thrown at you on the homework.